and to kick us off let's take a look at a short um well funny interesting if you, you may put it that way story um from a few nights ago roots party presidential candidate professor george rojakoya unveiled a 10-point manifesto outlining his agenda for kenya if he wins the august 9th elections top of his agenda is legalizing bang and promoting its farming in order to bring the country's billions of shillings of uh, of debt um to a uh, halt now his lofty promises some bordering on interesting radical and some bizarre proposals have sparked intense debate on their practicability among Kenyans. Our reporter David Muthoka looks into the Roots Party Manifesto dubbed the Ten Commandments of the Freedom through which George Wajakoya is seeking to propel his presidential bid. <laughs> George Wajakoya's Roots Party launched its manifesto on Thursday evening in a four-hour-long ceremony mainly attended by the youth and conspicuously members of the Rastafari community. <laughs> the latter's attendance perhaps as a result of Wajakoya's selling point agenda in his 10-point manifesto, the legalization of Bang, to a community that has not shied away from calling for marijuana's legalization in recent years, the Wajakoya Bang legalization campaign that comes amid failed Bang legalization attempts in the past seems a shot in the arm with a new found camaraderie between Wajakoya and the Rastafari community coming to the limelight during the launch. If we legalize marijuana, the prices of food shall go down. The prices of oil shall go down. The cost of education shall go down. One egg of bangi can earn you $78,000 or $8 million per harvest. Per harvest. A harvest takes only six months. But the marijuana agenda is not the only sensational and arguably radical point in Wajakoya's manifesto dubbed the Ten Commandments of Freedom. In the unveiling, Wajakoya further promised to farm snacks with an eye on selling snack meat and snack poison to foreign markets to fund the education budget. Each venom, venomous snake farmer will earn an average of $6,000 or $600,000 per vial antimony. Wajakoya also promised to export dog meat, hang the corrupt in the fight against corruption, suspend the constitution indefinitely, shut down the SGR project, and reduce the working days from 5 to 4. The 61-year-old Roots Party leader is further pledging to shift the capital city to Isiolo, create eight regional states, and deport idle foreigners. For how long are we going to be told lies? There will be no mamamboga in our government. There will be no wheelbarrows in our government. Legal and economic experts have, however, poked holes on the manifesto, questioning its practicability. I would say that is a manifesto seems to me to oversimplify the functions of government. They are very complex. As a government, I think when going forward, the priority has to be education, there has to be manufacturing, and we have to focus on innovation. According to them, some promises are ultra-vious to the constitution, meaning their implementation is beyond Wajakoya's powers. I think what he has done, probably listen to him, is that he has tried to identify the problems that we face, the problem of inequality, we have uh, the debt problem but he does not have a solution to any of those problems. The manifesto has also been described as flawed, misleading and self-contradictory. Professor Ajakoya is telling us that we will be able to produce 96 billion US dollars in one year, beating Afghanistan, the US, Jamaica and all the other countries uh, in one year. This is not possible. And so uh, that proposal in itself is what we would call hot smoke. But Ojakoya has told of critics, including those terming him a project on a mission. These people are selling people that are in projects. 
Sisi as Roots Party, we are very neutral. Hatuna Matusi, we are Rasta men. With the so-called Freedom Manifesto dividing opinion, Wajakoya is hell-bent on using it to hit the ground running 38 days to go to the polls. David Mudoka, KTN News, Nairobi. <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> that is a point of conjecture between the environment and politics. And our next guest is smack in the middle of those issues. He is a political analyst as well as an environmental um, expert. I'm talking about Dr. Kinyanjui Koimbori. Thank you so much for joining us this Thank morning. You so much. What do you make of that manifesto, first of all? Uh, for me, I look at it in the environmental aspect, and uh, I can see the points that he has are valid in terms of. Uh, if you plant what is calling the marijuana plant, mm -hmm. to me in the environmental world, uh, it is a positive thing because we all recognize that plants are one of the carbon sequesters. They help to absorb carbon in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And right now we are fighting the problem of uh, global warming. And you are trying to look into which mechanisms can we use nature-based solutions to absorb this carbon. Yeah. So you see the government is investing so much into increasing its forest cover up to 10%. So him coming in with the aspect of planting marijuana, which is a green plant, yeah. then it will help to absorb more carbon in the atmosphere. Then we'll have, to, uh, the, uh, and then we'll be able to mitigate this warming aspect. And then eventually everybody will have a cooler world to live in and live longer. So that's my aspect on that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you are in agreement with some of those points that yeah. he has, being an environmentalist yourself. But then there are bigger issues, far from Kutingiza Miti, mm. there are other issues yeah. that actually are climate uh, that need to be pushed by p the mm. political elite that are linked to the environment. Yeah. Very important issues that I do believe are being overlooked. Mm. Paint us a picture of um, the current political environment, the rhetoric, and what you feel is missing from the discussions and the conversations that are being had right now. Thank you so much for that. And uh, let, let me touch on something small before I go into the manifestos of the other presidential candidates mm -hmm. on the matters environment. You have to notice that uh, every voter needs to look critically into the people they are voting into office. What do I mean by this? We're, in Kenya we have now around 2,500 legislatures. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is 2,200 uh, MCAs around 349 MPs and then another 47 senators, 47 deputy governors and 47 governors. Mm. So we have around 2,500 legislatures. And when it comes to making laws that protect the environment, we, are, we usually use three arms of government. That is mm. the legislature, the executive and the judiciary. Yeah. The, the legislature is the most important. They make up laws. So when you elect a leader who is one, not climate conscious, number two, who is not educated, that's why you see we are held bent to the judiciary as one of the three arms of government mm -hmm. when they say degree is not a requirement for these elective posts. And how do you expect these leaders, the 2,500, to come up with laws and amendments that help protect the environment? Yes. So you see these three arms of government, they need to work together. And a case scenario, let me give you, is a good example of, uh, we had uh, one MP recently in Kenya, way back, he was a minister of health and also a Bureti MP sometimes back. Mm. And he said that uh, trees don't bring rain. Rain <laughs> brings, uh, rain is, the, rain bring trees. Yeah, so you see, that. they're the ones given this contradictory uh, kind of information. Even uh, Donald Trump, yeah. he's well known for so many, some of these tweets which are Calling it awkward, hoax, yeah. saying that climate change is a thing for, for China. Mm. China came up with climate change so that they can affect the economy of the US. So what I'm saying is that we need to have leaders who are climate conscious right. so that they can be able to come up with the laws that are able to protect the environment. No one would ask, we are in, uh, would say, mm. would argue, um, we are in Africa, mm. we are known for our wonderful climate mm. and our environment is not that badly of compared to what you've mentioned, China or mm. India or, you know, yeah. wherever else in the world where manufacturing is actually swallowing up the environment. Why should a country such as Kenya mm. care? Yeah, uh, let me say this. Uh, yes, you're right. In terms of climate change, Africa contributes less than 3% mm -hmm. into the climate change pollution. We have countries like US, China, Germany, they contribute a huge chunk. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that, uh, and I also want to rate the presidents, and I want to, be, co to congratulate the president of Kenya, that is Uru Kenyatta. In 2015, he was able to put Kenya in the map, in the ratification and the signing of the Paris Agreement, mm -hmm. whereby we were among 197 countries that signed that agreement into ensuring that we cut down our carbon emissions. Yeah. So the reason I'm saying, why should Kenya participate? Uh, 
The reason is that the uh, climate, the COP treaties, they have set aside $100 billion every year. This money is supposed to, be, to go to developing nations mm -hmm. that have been affected by the impacts of climate change. Remember if there's global warming, the ice sheets melt. So this water ends up trickling down, filling up and flooding. In Kenya, we have, we have experienced drought. Yes. We have experienced floods. In Sudan, they've experienced the same. In fact, recently in Kenya, we had 2 million people who are affected by drought. Right. Floods were the same. We had the case of uh, Lake Baringo and Bogoria almost merging. Put in mind, one is fresh water, one is uh, saline. Mm. So, yes, we cannot say that we don't contribute a lot, but what I'm saying is that we are living in one bowl. So, what you do at that end will eventually have a ripple effect mm -hmm. on my end. So, mm -hmm. what we are saying is that we would rather pull all our hands together, play each one of us their own role yeah. and then instead of saying that we don't contribute let the others do it so everybody has a role to play no matter how small it is yeah you're very passionate about this mm. even from the way you're speaking mm. about it and no doubt these are very important issues right mm. but in the current political atmosphere mm. yeah. matters of climate change unless they're taking the form of what mm. ja wajakoya mm. you know the that sort of packaging mm. they are quote-unquote not sexy so to speak politically speaking right yeah. so how would you being in the political space and in the mm. environmental expertise space mm. how would you package this so that the young person out there who is actually affected by these yeah. matters takes it seriously yes uh, thank you so much for that i think the, the huge problem we have with these political parties and the manifestos they come with they usually uh, do what we call copy and paste mm. they don't sit down with experts like us to give them the manifesto that is tailored in an expert way yeah. so when you talk about wajakoya's manifesto i can say yes it has that aspect but maybe he didn't know that it was environmentally oriented. Of course, again, didn't mean, I'm sure that was not the initial That was intent, not the initiative, yeah. but you see on the other aspect, it has yes, some kind of uh, reflective so, advantage. Yeah. But the other disadvantage that it has, he's talking about uh, even selling some of uh, the parts of hyenas mm. you get money from. Mm. So when you do that, he's encouraging what to call poaching. So ah. at the end of it, it has a negative effect. Okay. When he's talking about... But if you mainstream it, then... If you mainstream it, it can happen. Yeah. But you see, once you have such kind of industry, you open it up, you'll not be able where, to manage it. Where do we stop? Uh, where will you stop it? Yeah. And then we look at the manifesto of uh, even uh, <coughs> Kenya Kwanzaa. They were able to highlight a few some days back. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that they have mentioned a few things in terms of climate change issues, wastewater management, and all mm -hmm. these things. Eh? Mm -hmm. So people are gearing towards environmental kind of rehabilitation. And also in terms of Azimio, uh, Raila Molodinga was able to mention a few things. He mm -hmm. mentioned that there will be life imprisonment for people who are engaged in poaching, mm -hmm. people engaged in trafficking, people engaged in ivory. So right. that's an environmental kind of aspect. And also he mentioned the aspect of creating uh, magic wakila bomber. That uh -huh. is every home to have access to water. So that is a climate change issue. So you see all these leaders from Wajakoya, to Kenya Kwanza, to Azimio, to even Mo, uh, Maure, who is, I think, he's here to release his manifesto, the same. Mm. But I think all of them, they are trying to tap into that rich vote mm -hmm. of the climate conscious uh, voters who are right. outside there. Absolutely. But how many are they? Do you think that's uh, there, there are many. I think yeah. everybody is climate conscious <laughs> yes. in one way or the other because yeah. you want, everybody is, is uh, wants to exercise, everybody wants a clean air, everybody wants to, everybody who is a parent, they have children, they want them to live longer. Yeah. So it means that everybody is climate conscious because the environment per se means the surrounding of the environment right. anything that is surrounding you mm -hmm. is your environment yeah if so you we should care yeah also with, if you focus on this matters explain to us the kind of change you can expect in tomorrow's future mm -hmm. if the leaders are, are are focused on even cleaning up the environment mm -hmm. talk about urban settlements mm -hmm. and all that that is also an important factor mm -hmm. of environmental consciousness thank you so much and i'm happy to say that kenya has played a huge role in mm -hmm. fact when you look at the rating of kenya globally it's huge we are rated at, at around number three or four in terms of using uh, green renewable energy, that is geothermal. Mm. We are rated globally in very huge ranks. So when it comes to Kenya, we have ratified, we have signed the, we, we actually have even sent the nationally determined contributions, which is part of the COP treaties. And these contributions, they are saying that Kenya aims to cut its carbon emissions by 32%. Mm. That's why you see Kenya has even uh, went forth to put electric vehicles. In urban centers, we have put walkways, non-motorized uh, transport pathways for people to walk, yes. to cycle. So mm. those are ways to cut our carbon emissions. And I'm happy to say that Kenya is following the right path. The only thing 
thing is the BRT system, yeah. which I hope it picks up because it will help to reduce traffic jams. Because during traffic jams, that's when the carbon emissions are very, very high. Mm -hmm. But also Kenyans, because of not mistrust issues, they are not into carpooling. Because where For you sure. live, yeah. I expect you have a neighbor and they are yeah. coming to town. Mm -hmm. But they can't give you a lift. So you see, <laughs> you're living in a flat of 20 people, 20 cars on the road. Right, but yeah. if you are working together, you have no trust issues, then it means you can only use two of three vehicles and you each of you give each other a lift to town and reduce <laughs> carbon emissions. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice yeah, it should <laughs> for be. the environment? <laughs> now, uh, let's talk, uh, I mean, as we wind up, anything <clears throat> you'd like to add on this matter of the politics of the environment? Yeah, l let me say that uh, I, uh, what I would wish for all the political leaders mm. is to emulate the leaders who have set the pace ahead of them. I'm happy to say a few counties have even ratified and they've come up with climate change bills and acts, which is a way forward. Like some of the arid areas, Mandera, Masabit, Wajir have set it up. In urban centers, Nakuru County has set it up, and also Nairobi has set it up. So you see, this one tells you that leaders, when you have leaders who are climate conscious, then you'll have a place to live. So the lastly, but not least, is that uh, when once we're approaching this political space, let no leader use environment as uh, a way to get votes and giving out information that is not scientific, uh, scientifically kind of uh, approved. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is that they should reach out to these people who are actually experts in these areas. Yeah. We give them informed information so that they can be able to articulate it to the masses. Yes. Instead of saying something which is uh, uh, wrong, like the case where I've told you that people are saying rain does not come from trees, it comes from clouds and all these things, <laughs> full of balloons. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's absolutely unfortunate how ignorant we can be about these issues, but it's very important to focus on the environment. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kenyandri Koimbo Koimbori, right, yeah. is a political analyst as well as an environmental expert. And that draws our conversation here on Weekend Express to a close. Thank you so much for tuning in, seeing you in a few on News Center for the very, very latest in news and updates. My name is Trix Ingado.